again guys, it's Carly from The Poetry of Nice and today I have 10 shoe bolo brands that I want to share with you. Real quick if you're new here, welcome. This is a channel all about reselling online. I currently sell on Poshmark, eBay and Etsy. I do well being a stay at home parent. This is my part time work at home job business, whatever you want to call it. And on this channel, I like to share my haul videos, the things I buy to sell, my sales videos, so I can show you how much those things actually sell for, tips, tricks, tutorials, and all kinds of other cool stuff in between. So if that sounds interesting, please do think about hitting that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to say hello in the comments so that I can say hi back. So I'm going to treat this like any other bolo video that I've done, and I'm going to take you all over to my laptop where I'm going to show you these 10 shoe brands that sell well online. I'm going to show you their labels, I'm going to show you their current comp so you can see how much they're selling for so uh let's go all right you guys so i have my 10 bolo shoe brands to be honest i could have done way more and i may end up doing a second part to this video i don't know i'm gonna think about it but i'm gonna show you just 10 that i personally have sold and found um apart from these first ones the first one i'm gonna show you i've never found it is on my desperately like looking for list right now and um, i'm going to show you each item i'm going to show you the comps and once again like i do in all my bowler videos i have not altered these i've literally put them in like the keyword the brand name whatever you want to call it in the search bar and then i have um scrolled down here on the side of the page whoops she says that she highlights everything and i click sold and then i scrolled down. that's all i did i did not filter as you can see here by um like highest price or anything like that this is just literally what has sold recently for each brand and then what i'll do is the next page over um i've got a close-up of basically like the label or the logo of each item so if you're looking for it out in the wild you're going to know what you're what you're looking at basically so let's crack on first one is free birds this is the one that i'm desperately seeking we'll see if i find it as you can see here um boots are doing very well so 125 sold 80 sold 30 for the sandals, a little bit less there. These boots, 100, 100, 65, 135, 165, 90. You get the gist. They have some really nice high soles there. Definitely a big old bolo, um, a big old boho, I should say. I've got bolo on the brain. Boho vibe to them, especially these are awesome. Anyway, um, so let me go ahead and show what that logo looks like. Um, and as you can see here, so it says Freebird, and this is what you're going to see um, when you turn over the shoe, and um, potentially inside the shoe. I don't have a picture of inside, but there we go. That's one thing to look at. Got a good idea of style and logo there. Um, so the next one is Everlane. I have sold these. I sold the Day Glove, I think it's called. They did really, really well for me. So I paid up for them as we say in the thrift store i paid about 15 dollars although it worked out average to less but they were asking 15 dollars for the shoes and i paid it essentially um, and they sold within 12 hours and they sold for 90 dollars um, and i was really happy with that if i ever find them again i will darn well pick them up they did so well and they were beautiful shoes um so let's look at the sold so we have a 34 there we have 100 99 60 50 65 90 what a cool picture um 30 40 80 so, you know, anywhere between that kind of 35 up to 100 or so, like I said, I sold mine for 90 in 12 hours. So I would probably suggest starting high if you have a nice style and they're in good condition. Um, and then this is what they look like on the inside. They say Everlane and made in Italy. And honestly, if you touch them, you're going to know that they're quality. They were really, really gorgeous shoes. Um, next one is Fry. So I found two pairs of Fry boots. One I have listed in my closet right now. One I sold for about I think it was about 125 is how much they sold for originally um i mean not originally by me <laughs> they sold by me in my poshmark closet for 125 dollars but they did take a little while i will say that um but you can also get bags and things like that so i'm going to show you the com so 50 on the bag 49 130 these tall boots are um, pretty pretty popular um got some more bags some flats 65 200 for those 80 45 125 59 35 40 so yeah some good solid count, uh, comps there not bad at all um and then here is a close-up this is what it looks like inside the label and then this is what you're going to see on the outside of the shoe just this little logo right here and that's usually what would tell me that they are a fry product all right, next is Bed Stew. I found these recently. They already sold. I think they sold for, I want to say, between 50 and 60. Um, they sold in a pretty good time frame, less than a month. And I had the small ankle boots as well. So we have solds here, 45, 155, 40, 48, 158. Those are neat. Um, and definitely some bags, some like distressed leather bags. They definitely have a distressed like overall aesthetic to them, I would say. Um 49 40 58 
85, 104, again, you get the gist. Um, and let's look at that logo. And that's what it looks like on the inside there. And then on the soles as well, you're going to find that logo. And I mine actually had some writing on it, I think, saying they were like hand bench made by hand or something. Whatever it was, it gave me a really good idea, like with all the stitching and the leather soles. Again, leather soles being a really, really good indicator of quality when it comes to shoes for the most part. Um, they gave me the idea that they were going to be higher end uh, shoes or boots. All right, next one is Allegria, Allegria, I, I say Allegria, so I'm going to stick with that. Um, essentially, these are like comfort shoes, and these are something that is sought out usually by people who are on their feet a lot in their job. So, um, you know, nurses, teachers, chefs, that kind of thing. Um, and they usually have some like nice bright prints. You can see around here what I'm talking about. Um, I find that the brighter the print, the better they do. And I find that the clogs tend to do better as well. This is a very classic Allegria style right here. Um, so let's look at these sole prices. We have 25 for the ones without a back, um, 45 nursing clogs, that is a good, or nurse clogs are good um, keywords, 25, 35 for the flip-flops, 25, 50, 32, 40. In my experience, they've always sold for me between 30 and 40. <clears throat> but you may have to hang on just a little bit since um, there are quite a few of them out there. Like I said, the brighter the print, the better. Here we go, 30, 48, 25, 26. Um, and I'm going to show you. This is what they look like on the inside. And then what you're going to see on the outside is this little butterfly logo right here. And again, they're very sort of noticeable shoes. Once you know the style of them, you're bound to notice them on the shelf. All right, next is Dansko. I know that Dansko is really hit or miss for some people. Some people used to pick it up and they don't anymore. I still grab it almost despite the condition as long as it's cheap. Again, I'm talking like a dollar or two at a yard sale, a filler bag, something like that. If there is in very, very good condition, I may pay up to maybe ten dollars that might be pushing it um but i've still found that they sell fast and that they sell decently well i sold a boots with a, uh, some boots with a whole bunch of scuffing like some deep scuffs on the toes for i think it was 25 they sold for and then i sold a pair of the classic clogs which is what you're looking at right here and right here um recently as well for i think it was like 35 something along those lines so they still do well in my opinion with Dansko's, most resellers are going to tell you to check those soles you're going to want to do the bend test so essentially that means you take the shoe and you sort of push it in and out gently and see if there is any give on that sole um Dansko's are very very prone to something called dry rot which any shoe for the most part can get any sort of quality shoe it's when they're not stored properly and essentially you're going to end up with a black like sticky residue on your finger which is super gross trust me I have found them in that condition before or you're going to start to see some visible cracking and people can receive them having bought them online put them on walk around and have them literally disintegrate beneath them so you're definitely going to want to do that dry rot check that bend check on dance goes um so we've got a 58 a 38 65 59 50, 58, 57, 65. Again, solid comps. I am all for picking these up when you find them at a good price and they're in good condition. Um, and this is what the logo looks like right there. All right, onwards. So this is an interesting one for me. Disney Vans. I recently sold, like within the last couple of weeks, a pair of Disney Vans. They were the Cheshire Cat. Um, by Disney Vans, I mean is the Disney collaboration with Vans, and it comes out periodically where they bring out different prints and things. When they come out, they sell them. When the prints are gone, Vans no longer stocks them. It's kind of like Coach and Disney collaboration in a way, where when it's gone, it's gone. Um, and those Cheshire Cat ones sold on eBay for me on a best offer of $100, again, just two weeks ago. So I'm a big fan of Disney vans. Now, when I looked at the comps on Poshmark, I can't say that I was overly enthralled with them. And I think that they can go for more. That's just my personal opinion. So we've got 99, which is good. But then we've got a lot of like, we've got a 59, a 30. We've got another 30, a 50 brand new with tags. 35, 42. I mean, they're not bad, 40. They're definitely good and I would still pick them up. But I think some of them, like 30 right here, mine had the scuffs and the color eight discoloration and stuff around the white part. Granted, they were a size 11, so they were a little bit bigger. But again, 30 compared to the 100, I wonder if it's worth maybe holding out a little bit more when it comes to Disney vans. Um, I think sometimes you're just waiting for that right buyer with something so specific. I don't know. I'd love to know your opinion. So if you have any insight, please feel free to pop it in the comments um, because I'm learning as I go, just like everybody else. But for me, if I see Disney vans at a yard sale or a thrift store and they're, you know, a, a good price, I'm not talking like $20, $30, just a decent price, I pretty much always grab them 
them because like I said when the prints are gone the prints are gone and when people are seeking them online resell the reseller market is pretty much all they have to go on for the most part so keep your eyes peeled and then just a close-up for you here um there's the little Vance tag in case you've never seen it before um also these like Disney and like sometimes the villains and stuff where it's the sort of um montage I don't know what word to use really of all of the different characters together they can do especially well just FYI all right this is a new one for me abio abio however you want to say that um it is i believe like a comfort shoe i picked up a couple uh, a couple of pairs i sold them both now both within that 25 to 35 dollar range for me um sold here 20 28 46 40 13 but they were flip-flops um 10 for the sandals see they're kind of all over the place but there are some that are fairly consistent 39 32 42 I tend to look at the higher here, 40, 75, but they were new, 30, 39. I think sometimes it is a case of being just a little bit patient with them. And it depends on size sometimes as well. 30, 20, 34, 30. You know, like any brand, it can be hit or miss. However, I'm sharing this with you. This may not be the same level of bolo as like, you know, free birds or fry or bed stew, for example, but it's still one that we, you know, there's a good chance of finding this out in the wild. Um, around me, it's kind of an outdoorsy area. So I find this, I find um, Merrill, Morel, um, Teva, Keen, all of those kind of things frequently at yard sales. And those are just such good kind of between a bread and butter and a bolo in a way because I feel like they go for a little bit more than a bread and butter you know that kind of again 25 to 35 dollar mark is pretty good in my opinion um but you know it's still not it's not going to retire you know I'm not going to retire on it let's put it that way but it's still worth picking up in my opinion so I'm going to share it with y'all okay um ABO there you go that's the logo all right, Birkenstock. This is, most people know about this, but I'm going to throw it in here anyway. Um, so Birkenstocks, for the most part, I will always pick up, even if they fall apart a little bit. I really, really will, because they still have a market for them. Um, they're fairly expensive shoes, but they have such a following. Um, now, be careful. There are plenty of brands out there that make their own versions of Birkenstock that can really you know, you can really get confused over them. So make sure that you're checking what you have. Birkenstock will almost always, I believe, be made in Germany. The ones I've found have always been made in Germany. They could be made in other places as well. There are sort of offshoots to Birkenstock. There's Berkies, there's um, Papillo, Papillo, something like that. Um, there's, there's a few. So actually what I would recommend is if you're interested to learn a bit more, go to the Birkenstock website because on there you're going to see all of the sort of brands um, underneath that Birkenstock umbrella all the different offshoots of Birkenstock so you can take a look and get familiar with some of those as well they have a lot of different styles and they will almost always as well or I think always have um, the European size on them and so you can go to the website again check out their size chart you can get that conversion so that you can put it in your listing as well so let's take a look we've got 40 54 40 35 28 20 75 50 65 40 40 40 50 50, 30 45 and onwards and these look like they're in really really rough shape but as you can see even in super rough shape they do, do still sell um so if you get them super cheap it may still be worth it and they're a great brand to have in your closet as well um yeah so let's take a look at that logo there we go that's what it looks like as you can see the made in germany you can see the european size right here that is what you will go onto the website and you will look for that 41 and find out what that equates to in a u.s size all right and the last one i'm going to show you was actually a bit of a surprise to me but it's timberland shoes specifically the boots um but i picked a pair at a yard sale not too long ago and they sold quickly for me for 55 dollars. and i'll be honest i left the yard sale left them behind happened to go back and decided oh i might as well just grab them and obviously i'm glad i did because they sold for 55 really quickly but i learned something there i had assumed that uh timberland wasn't a desirable brand i don't know why um i didn't know a lot about the brand that's just kind of my concept um preconception of it or whatever but um yeah now i know better so i'm going to share it with you <laughs> um so let's look at these souls 85 30 75 we got a 22 we got uh 47 these are little kids uh 32 55 32 40 65 30 65 75 35 some of these are kids i think Looks like the flats weren't doing too well with the $9 there. 60, 40, 63. 
Anyway, pretty darn decent for a pair of boots. And uh, this one I'm going to show you. This is a logo right here. You can see with the tree. And then it's upside down. I apologize for that. But uh, Timberland, you can see it right there. So that's kind of what you're looking for as well. And then on the outside of the shoe, you're going to have that little tree as well that's going to give you the indication that this is a Timberland product. All right. And that is it for the uh, laptop portion of this video. All right, you guys, I hope that that was useful. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked it, please do give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please do think about hitting that subscribe button down below so you can come back and hang out again. Don't forget to say hello in the comments so that I can say hi back and I will catch you in the next video. Bye, you guys.